I think you took too much off the sides. Well, actually, I took too much off this side, and then I had to fix this side to match it. What are you doing here? Oh, well, you know, we promised we weren't going to do religion bashing on this channel, you know. But then you had that video back in December with the, the Jesus character in it, and I, I don't know, just something seems off about that. Wait, which video are you referring to? Um, the Christmas episode, you, you know, A Christmas Journey? The Christmas- you thought that was Jesus? No, man, that was Charles Manson. If I was gonna do Jesus, I'd do him like this. Ah, I'm what your society made me. I'm a reflection of you. When was the last time you went to church? When did Sharon Tate die? <sighs> Listen, just, just sort this out or I swear to God I'm introducing a new character called Christian Matt. Don't worry, I've got just the thing. An even more offensive depiction of Jesus. There were some movies. Terrible movies. Movies so awful. No one would touch. Then came a Matt. Sad little Matt. Matt then decided. These movies to watch. Today's episode, Miracle Man. <sighs> Hello, Internet. I'm called Mad, and I know Neil Breen regards himself as Jesus, but have you ever wondered what it'd be like if Neil Breen adapted the life of Jesus Christ? Well, look no further than the Miracle Man. Released in 2013, Miracle Man is the sole credit of writer-director Ted Jordan. And the only reason I suspect that's not just an alias for Neil Breen is that Breen loves to plaster his name and face on everything, because otherwise, Jordan has Breen's style down perfectly. It stars Seth Grandred, who's probably best known for, uh, Atomic Shark? I don't know, honestly, I'm kinda surprised he's even been in one other movie. Actually, despite this being the only movie Jordan's ever worked on, most of the cast has some experience. Most of them... An Atomic Shark. A film I'm sure has an equally inspiring message for Christians. In that it has no message for Christians. This is Miracle Man. And you know you're in for a treat when they mess up on the first shot. Look, they try to zoom in but accidentally move the shot so there's all this empty space. We meet the lead character, Jason Crawford, known to his friends as JC. And they do all sorts of obnoxious editing tricks. Listen to my father. I've been sent to this planet to bring light to a dark world. Remember kids, just because you can do something with the editing doesn't mean you should. And with an opening logo like this, this feels more like the intro to a History Channel show than a movie. So the movie starts at a barbecue place, and oh yeah, the director went to the amazing bulk school of green screening normal locations. Now, they did pick nicer backgrounds than bulk, and it's not every scene, but it is bad and it is pervasive. Meanwhile, in an alley, a woman is getting robbed, and JC stops it the Neil Breen way by waving his hands. The woman he saves is... Well, her name's not important, she disappears after the 20 minute mark, and she agrees to dinner with JC for saving her life. And then this movie goes to hell, and you know it's gonna look great. Satan is apparently played by Zordon, and it looks like they've got GameCube graphics in the background. And they're worried JC is gonna start doing his father's work after 40 days fasting in the desert. Oh, and if shitty acting, shitty green screen, and shitty editing aren't enough, enjoy some shitty cinematography. Hey boss, how was the camping? Nice. Nice and quiet. I loved it. And of course, JC runs a construction company. Dinner goes well, but JC is tempted to, uh, ask her for another date? You enjoy the evening and you want to see her again. That's it? That's that's not temptation, that's just being interested in someone. 
Anyways, Satan's guys are here to tempt JC, like in the Bible. Except, uh, that was when he was in the desert, not when he just got out of the desert. So, not a perfect adaptation. And I'm just gonna let this scene play out and you'll understand everything you need to about this film. We do have a policy of only doing business with those companies in good standing with the Better Business Bureau and that have an established good reputation in our community or nationally. Ma'am, you don't understand. You'll have nothing to worry about if you only knew who the owner is. He's the most credible man you can find on the face of the earth. I can't believe this is going on. Am I dreaming? You listen to me, and listen carefully. Right down at the top of that list, JC Construction. You will hire them. Do you hear me? Yeah, that's what we're dealing with. Anyways, JC turns down the deal because it's evil or something. Honestly, I'm kind of distracted by the fact that the background and the characters don't quite move together. Feels a little faces of evil to me. And after some awkward, pointless slow-mo of him drinking coffee, they clearly fade out the background and the character independently. This is a decently common mistake among new editors, but it's super easy to fix. Just nest both elements and fade out the nested sequence. That's the bar for editing on this show. Could I personally do better? And in this case, I win. JC drinks some more coffee when he gets a call from his brother who has a layover in... Phoenix? Flying out to LA and I got a three hour layover in Phoenix tomorrow. Uh, this is not Phoenix. Trust me, I've been to Phoenix. No one there has this much grass. Like your fave, buddy. Oh yeah, what's that? The blank sheet of paper flavor. Their conversation basically goes nowhere and his brother isn't even mentioned again for the rest of the movie. But as he's leaving, JC gets tempted by discount Chevy Chase, but like old man Chevy Chase from Community. He takes JC to Vegas by way of Trump Tower. Wow. That joke wrote itself. Las Vegas! The epitome of fame! I'm uh, pretty sure Vegas is where you go when you're less famous than you used to be. New York City and LA are the ones that are all about fame. Although I'd like to point out, we made it to Breen's hometown. More evidence this is one of his. But when JC won't go for his temptation, uh, this happens. I'm fooling with you. Now I'm gonna take over. Maybe I can change your mind. Yeah, it's just like a full minute of this. JC goes to a wedding, looking like this, and seriously, this Christian movie couldn't even film in a real church? If this is actually a Christian movie? I mean, it's about Jesus, but in the same way Last Temptation of Christ is about Jesus. It's just sort of an adaptation of his story. It's not using it to push a message the way a lot of Christian movies would. Also, d does Christianity exist in this universe? They got a cross in the church, but isn't JC Jesus? Is JC the second coming? Was Jesus a false prophet and this guy's here to actually do his work? Or is JC just a normal dude with Jesus' powers and beliefs? They don't really have an answer. The Jesus stand-in just exists in a world where Christianity is already a thing. But oh no, they locked the champagne up and lost the key. Whatever will Jesus do about this? Father, I can do nothing without you. I will be done. Great, but what about the people who wanted water? Oh, but uh, this scene is in a real church. He heals a guy's heart problem, but he's intercepted by cops on the way out. Phoenix PD. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Okay, no, I take it back. Even Neil Breen's not that cheap. And hey, let's add lighting to the list of things this movie doesn't do well. He's green screen. You can't even argue there wasn't room for a second light. Hell, that's probably part of why the green screening is so bad. Green screens require really good lighting. I know who put you up to this. And I demand that he get behind me right now. Do you hear me, Satan? <laughs> I knew you were a nut job. Why are they laughing? Did they miss the guy he blinked out of existence? Because he does it to himself, too. We're not fighting against human beings. We're fighting against spiritual beings. Far out, man. His lady friend, who is distinctly not any of the established female characters in this movie, is held hostage by, uh, Rob Zombie? Who's apparently possessed by demons? Which would explain how he went from an abysmal film to an excellent film. And JC casts out the demons. Also, the white balance is way off, but at this point I'd be more surprised if it wasn't. And now I invite you all to enjoy this CG rat. What happened in Vegas? But sir, that stays in Vegas. Also, this is a completely different hell than earlier, and... Frankly, a better looking one, though that's a low bar. JC finishes construction on a house and he has a real phone number on his car. It's, uh, it's not a valid number, I checked. And they really splurged on this next scene. It's set in a real restaurant, no green screen. One of JC's friends tries to talk him into going to a football game, but he's busy helping people. A plot thread that does get picked up later. I know so many of them don't. Plus some bikers show up and tell JC they got his back for helping one of their nieces. Okay, now this looks like Phoenix. JC stops a guy from running over a little girl and this happens. <laughs> Truly the sin city of bad religious films. Next, we meet sisters Mary and Martha, whose brother Les is one of JC's employees. <laughs> Les. Imagine a movie where Jesus hung out with lesbians. <laughs> well, me and JC went and got some wings. Uh, no, you definitely got Mexican food. And what's this shot about, Christian filmmakers? At the next meeting, the bikers show up and JC gives one of them prostate cancer? God knows and loves you, and he wants you to know that tonight. And to validate that, he has a gift for you. Right now. Prostate cancer. Yes! I mean, I'm sure he's supposed to be curing the prostate cancer, but it sure looks like he's giving it to him. I wish they could all have miracles. I wish they could too, Mary. Then give it to them! You're literally God! And because the head of the bank goes to the corrupt evil church, they pull funding for JC's next house. Hmm, an evil banker. I'm kind of leaning back towards this being a Neil Breen joint. And on the other hand, all the women are wearing bras. Ah, and Hell has gotten another redesign. A temple? Okay. And then I guess God speaks directly to JC. I'm with you, my son. I've chosen you to preach good news to the poor. In this scene and only this scene... But oh no, Les gets in a car wreck and dies on the way to a football game. That's what you get for having a name so close to Lazarus. And then we meet the best actor in the movie. Yes! Yes! They did it! I knew they'd come through! Hey! No knuckles, bro! Give me five! <laughs> I love him. I wish this wasn't his only scene. Buddy Les! He's in critical condition. I know. I'll get back to him. You'll get back to him? What do you mean you'll get back to him? 
This is an emergency. You need to fly home now. I'll fly home Monday. Man, Jesus was a dick. Back in hell, uh, why is there just a PNG of Shaq in the background? And for a fun detail I didn't notice till I was in editing, there's two frames where everything turns red except the background elements? And Jesus spends the last ten minutes of the film blue-balling us. Like we know he's gonna resurrect Lazarus, just get on with it. He finally does and we cut to someone watching this movie. Yeah, that's about right. Feel like they left out the most important part of the Jesus story there. And that's Miracle Man. What a beautiful mess. This movie gets everything wrong and I love it. Pretty much every technical aspect, from the acting to the cinematography to the editing, has been done wrong. It doesn't even come together into a clear Christian message, it's just sort of about Jesus. Although, honestly, I kind of prefer that. This is one of the funniest bad movies I've ever seen, and it's all on YouTube for free. I highly recommend it. Well, how was that? <laughs> Welcome, Sodomites, to Matt's Funtime Christian Movie Show, starring me, Christian Matt. Now, we apologize for any previous versions of this show, but from now on, we're dedicated to watching only good, wholesome, biblically accurate Christian content. So join us next time when we watch Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter. And until then, may God bless you. Fave, buddy. Oh yeah, what's that? Four flavors in one. Suicide. <laughs> I don't do suicides anymore. It's just iced tea. And I'm so happy that in our audience today we have our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Give us some wisdom, Jesus. You look down on me, you'll see a fool. You look up to me, you'll see a god. But if you look right at me, you'll see yourself. Ah, a quote from the Proverbs. Thank you, Jesus. Well, this might have been a mistake.